Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And lots going on this week. First of all, it was hot this week. Oh my gosh. The air conditioner was cranked up. Uh, where did the monsoons go? Oh my goodness. So it's not over with though. They're, they're, they'll come back. So this rainy season starts in July and really goes through middle end of September somewhere. There's two, I don't know, a couple months, two and a half months worth of, of season. So it ebbs and flows. It comes and goes. So it, it too will come back. The biggest thing you can do right now, I'm seeing a lot of customers, they're coming in with uh, bug issues and dead branch, uh, stress of plants. So if your leaves at all on your plants, out in, the, out in the yard or in containers, raised beds, wherever, if you've got dead branches, cut them off. If you've got wilty branches or wilty curling leaves or just damaged leaves, uh, we saw that rain last week caused a lot of erosion controls, lots of damage in the landscapes where it just washed things away. And some areas got some hail or beat up the leaves. If you've got some of that, this is a great opportunity to feed your landscape. I can't emphasize this enough. Over and over, many times a day, I'm helping customers here at the garden center here in Prescott. We own a a family garden center. It's been around 58 years. We've seen almost everything in the yard. We can identify just about everything that's been planted. Uh, but, but this time of year, we see this happen every year. Plants start to yellow. They've got some, some damaged tips from either I forgot to water or the irrigation went down or, or the irrigation just isn't, it was never expanded to as the plant grew, it never was expanded to accommodate a larger plant. And so you'll see the stress show up on the plants. It happens usually in June through middle of July, and, and the rains usually will compensate for that. When you see this happen, there's two things that you can do. Uh, hand water if you need it, but usually we've got some moisture in the soil right now that's starting to happen. Yeah, it's hot as a... It's like, it's like I'm living down in Phoenix or something. Sorry, you folks that have homes in Phoenix and up here too. But that's the reason you have homes up here too, so you can get out of this heat. Uh, but it just, it'll, it'll, it'll rain. It'll start to mitigate some of that, and it'll be cooler again. Uh, what you can do right now is help your plant grow. This is a great growing. This is almost a second planting season or a second growing season. And so if you've got dead branches, cut those off. If you've got damaged leaves, pick them off. And then fertilize them with 744 all-purpose plant food. This is an organic food I put together decades ago. And it's made to work with our rains, with this summer growing season. So you put it on. It's a granular food. You just put it on over the rock, over the fabrics, through the gardens. You do not have to work it in. You just need to get it on. So our next rain that comes will activate it and put it down to the soil. It will actually encourage that plant to regrow new sycamore leaves, add new new growth on those new um, aspens. It'll have more uh, top growth on that on that small fruit tree you planted this spring. It'll help things mature and grow. It'll help it to push on new undamaged foliage. For things that are really stressed. They've really got some damaged leaves. The top really did get burned back. Uh, you see spotting on the leaves. You can tell there's a plant going, whoa, it's, that thing's struggling. Oh, oh my goodness. That's usually a stress level at the soil level. Either the irrigation didn't run correctly enough, so it didn't moisten enough soil for the root structure, so you killed off part of the roots. Or it just isn't mature enough to really keep up with all that new top growth. So you planted a, a new plant in the ground. It started to grow this spring. It came up. It just put on the, all this new foliage. And the roots are trying to keep up. But June and July are hard months. These are our most difficult months to grow things. And so the, the 
water you did give it, the, there wasn't enough roots underneath this plant to actually keep up with the perspiration. The foliage was producing, so it actually perspired faster than the roots could actually rehydrate the plant. It's just a maturity level. You need more roots. It, all plants, anything that's stressed needs more roots. You could have had grubs there. could be gophers eating at the roots. You folks from the high country could be prairie dogs. Who knows? I mean, just something, something's happening to the roots. And if you see the stress on the top, almost always there's a mirrored stress underneath the plant. Encourage more roots. The way to do that is you give it humic. There's humic acid. H-U-M-I-C, humic. It's a special product. It's like a magic. It's like fairy dust in a beautiful green organic bag. Um, that you put down on the ground and it feeds the soil. It feeds the mycorrhizal colonies, the worms. It, it activates the soil so the plant recognizes, oh, something's going on underneath in the soil around my root zone. I, I'm encouraged to root out more around my surrounding soil. It's not truly a food. It'll green things up. It changes, makes things more acidic, which is good. But really, when you work that in conjunction with Humec, with the all-purpose food, those two products spread underneath the plants, through your roses, uh, underneath your blueberries, and around your, your vegetable gardens, uh, and then you get a rain afterwards. Oh, my goodness. Plants respond, I mean, immediately. I mean, it will start rooting and leafing just immediately uh, for things that were blooming. So we're seeing right now, uh, bean bean pods coming on trumpet vine or or locusts, uh, dead head your flowers. Pick off the beans, pick off the the dead spin flowers. Give it the all purpose plant food, that seven four four mix, and give it the humic. And wow, watch those things leaf out and just come out of there. They'll just start. It, it activates them immediately. It's amazing actually. And you're taking advantage of the summer rainy season that's that's you're working with the environment that you're gardening in instead of against it and so if you were to do all these things back in june wouldn't have made any difference would have sat there and waited around until you got your first rain in july but by now doing it right now it really activates it one caveat if you've got edible plants fruit trees grapes berries strawberry plants vegetables. I created a different food that's a uniquer blend. Uniquer. Is that even a word? A unique blend for just edible things that is completely organic. It's a 644 material, but the you're using more meals like blood meal and bone meal and feather meal, and just gypsum and calcium. You're using a, a different mix that brings the flavor out in the vegetables, in the fruit, causes larger grapes, lar more strawberries. It's pelletized again. Again, it's or organics are kind of hard to deal with because they're usually powders, but we were able to pelletize this so it spreads through a hand spreader. You, I would encourage you to do the edible things with the fruit and vegetable food and do everything else from evergreens to lawns to perennials to roses with the 744 all-purpose food. There's two mixes I created years ago. And, and they work differently. So if in doubt, you just don't know, I only have money for one bag, get the all-purpose food. The reason being that's got cottonseed meal as that main ingredient in that. And cottonseed meal lowers the pH. Uh, it, it's good for bringing out color, fragrance, and fruits as well. That's why it was the original. Uh, but there's been so many, this drive, this this interest in edibles this year from from berries and grapes and fruit trees to tomatoes and you know peppers and squash there's just just this interest in sustainable backyard organic gardening i i just had to create another food for our backyard gardeners that wanted to keep it organic and yet works with our water it with our seasons with our soil that really activates plants this is so much better than a synthetic food a 10, 10, 10, 2020, 20, 20. you'll hear all kinds of crazy stuff on the internet. These are made for here, for Northern Air, made for Arizona that works with our soil, our water, our wind, our, our soils. It just, now's the time, stressed at all, fertilize. I won't go on my tirade of why you want to use organics. You should, but anyway, fertilize now 
and work with the environment instead of against it, especially plants that are stressed, you will see magic happen within the next few weeks. Be right back. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Waters Garden Companion Plants for July are hibiscus, purple verbena, crepe myrtle, and sensation maples. Sensation maples grow fast. The spring leaves erupt with soft reds. They quickly mature to a refreshing green for summer-long shade. Autumn, it unleashes a brilliant display of red leaves. Where this maple really shines is in the areas with challenging garden soils. The picture-perfect tree to line driveways or shade a patio. You'll only find sensation maples here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Some things are just better together. July is the best time to fertilize with all-purpose plant food from Waters. But pair the all-purpose with humic acid and it's a one-two punch of garden power. Humic acid gives your soil organic matter that helps plants' roots receive water and nutrients. So it makes fertilizer work even better. Like salt and pepper. Coffee and donuts. And hey, you and me. Aw, thanks Ken. All-purpose plant food and humic acid, better together and only at Waters Garden Center. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each each week with your garden questions. Just what are your neighbors talking about? So welcome to the studio, my Durango queen. Well, thank you. Good to be here. <laughs> Just have a uh, our our idea was when the kids left, we try to figure out how to have a family reunion because we lanes like hanging out together, uh, and so we rent an or Airbnb a really nice place, some place within a eight ten mile radius of driving between all the kids. So we've got Austin, we've got uh, El Paso, and Prescott. So what's eight hours? Durango's sort of in between all of the, those. And so we all landed and just enjoyed a week last week. We did. Uh, it was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful up there. What was beautiful about it? Oh, just all the beautiful mountains and trees. And we got some rain. It was just very, very nice. It's very it's very Rocky Mountain looking. <laughs> well, well, is that why they call it the Rocky Mountains? The Rocky Mountains. Mountains, yeah. Well, this is mountainous, but that's even yeah. more mountainous. And so, right. Uh, right, river going right through the... The, the Andes uh, River. Oh, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Just stunning. Yep. And the house we were at was close to Purgatory. For those people that are skiers, they would know that. So. Yeah. We did their alpine slides. You did some mountain biking. Yeah. It was just a lot of relaxing fun. Relaxing fun. The grandkids were up there. All the kids, everyone was there except our son. Yeah. He, the Army, he's a, a, a physician's assistant for First Armored Division. I think the engineers, no, the guys that shoot howitzers. So if you're shooting a cannon, <laughs> you get hurt. He and his guys take care of you. <laughs> and so and they just said, no one's leaving within a 50-mile radius of right. El Paso. You're not allowed to go anywhere until this virus thing. Or I don't know what's going on. But yeah. Well, they were spiking frustrated. at the time, yeah. so they were saying, nope, you're not leaving. We're hoping so. to take him up to Page. He's got three three months of leave. That he can't take. That he can't take. <laughs> and it runs out if you don't use it. If you yeah. kind of don't use it, you lose it. And so he's kind of, I think they'll they'll kind of be, they'll soften up hopefully on that. Hopefully September, hopefully in September, maybe this whole thing will be yeah. a little more under control. Well, and that'd be great. That would be nice, yeah. So our family, that's good. Flowers are blooming, but yeah. what about local gardens and local blooms? Anything going on? Sure. Well, of course, there's always something going on. So Rachel would like to know, her red salvia has gotten kind of spindly with the little you know, flowers just at the ends and that kind of stuff. And she wants to know if she can trim it back this time of year. Oh, salvia would love that. Uh, fertilize it right afterwards with flower power. It's a liquid fertilizer we put together for salvia, for things that bloom. It also works on tomatoes and other stuff, but it's just a magic fertilizer that really gets them to to start setting new flower buds or new fruits immediately. And so cut it back, all those spent flowers, take it back to the foliage, uh, touch, pick off the dead, damaged leaves, anything, just clean it up. 
fertilize it with the flower power and watch it come back to bloom within two, three weeks. It will be like, whoa, like spring all over again. It'll be amazing. The hummingbirds will be all over that thing. <laughs> I think that's true of a lot of our, our flowers in our yards right now. They've kind of, they did their big push and now they're just kind of looking a little tired, but you can trim a lot of those back and push them with that flower power. And, and we have a lot more season left to watch these things bloom and enjoy them. Yeah. August, September, October, you got three months easily mm-hmm. to get these things to bloom more, maybe, maybe even more. So it just depends on when the first frost comes, that kind of stuff. But you're right. you're only halfway into the season. And, and summer, with the summer rains and things that are happening, you get a good lightning storm. It charges up the clouds with nitrogen. And then it rains in your backyard after you've given it some flower power. I mean, it is... This is such a tremendous growing season Mm -hmm. if you take advantage of it. We call that pinching, just cleaning things up, pinching off the dead flowers or the spent flowers, and then fertilize it. We did that with our uh, meadow sage, Mm -hmm. perennials, gallardias, echinaceas, uh, the petunias, uh, our, our jasmines. We trimmed them up and cleaned them up, so now it looks like a brand new garden. Yep. That is true. They don't look tired anymore. No. <laughs> Next question is from Stacy. She's really upset with her apples. So <laughs> this year, they're just full of the coddling mothworms, yeah. and um, they're just dropping lots and lots of apples. She wants to know, is there anything she can do now, or is that time past to get rid of the worms? No, you... Well... There's worms in there. Once a worm is in there, there's no way to get a worm out other than cut them out, and then that's take damage in the fruit. But we're not done. Coddling moth is a little little moth. It's a cute little thing. She lays her eggs in the blossom as it's pollinating. And so and then the apple will actually form over top of that egg. And so that's where you get one exit tunnel coming out of the fruit. Well, unfortunately, we're such we're the perfect growing environment for apples. They do really well here. We're also the perfect growing environment for coddling moth. They do really well here. <laughs> and so they like they like apples. And so she'll be after it. She'll come back. There's two more waves that, that are, are going to hit the apples before we're done, before you harvest. So what will happen is she'll come in later, the next wave of coddling moth, the next larva will, will hatch, get wings, and go try to find a place to lay their eggs. Um, she'll lay an egg on the outside of the fruit, and that's when the ha- that's when the worm hatches, burrows in, and then burrows back out. That's where you get multiple exit tunnels. Mm-hmm. That's because she laid that's that egg was laid later in the season while the fruit was actually quite large. Um, so if you want any chance of having fruit with with less worms, uh, spray them with BT or. What's the Latin name for that? <laughs> Bacillus thuricide. Ah, you're so good. All that Latin stuff. So uh, we've got it at the garden center. It's completely organic, but it obliterates, absolutely obliterates worms. Mm-hmm. Uh, from big green tomato worms on your tomatoes to coddling moth on your apples or your pears. I'd spray apples and pears both. Mm-hmm. Um, spray them now. I would also, at the same time, I would get a coddling moth trap. This is the secret to having clean apples and pears. You hang a coddling moth trap in the tree, and it's a monitoring device. If you do your research on the Internet, they'll actually say, oh, it traps all the coddling moth. That's hog hooey. That is not right. What it does is it traps some coddling moths in the trap when they're actively laying eggs. So it helps you know, watch it. You just watch inside this little tiny sticky trap. Go, oh, there's a couple, there's a couple moths. So that, isn't that interesting? Where'd they come from? And the next night you'll go, oh, there's there's more. And then the next night you'll come out, it's full. You're going, whoa, they are active. I need to spray this tree with BT. Bacillus thuricide. Bacillus thuricide. Very good. Bacillus the BT is the short name. That's what we use in the industry. Put you'll spray it and you will get rid of all of those worms and it keeps them from laying more doing more damage Mm -hmm. next year do the exact same thing but just as the petals are dropping in the spring it looks like it's snowing almost spray your trees right then and you'll get rid of all those eggs that were laid inside the flower before it had sealed over and you can actually have completely clean apples and pears with no worms at all just with that little trick Mm -hmm. get a calling moth bt Coddling moth trap, BT. You know what the BT is also good for? What? 
controlling mosquitoes. Oh, well, yeah, that makes sense. Sure. Mm-hmm. Or um, uh, what's the, the little one? dunks. Yeah, little dunks. They're called little donuts dunks, but they're actually BT yeah. is what's in there. So if you have uh, standing water, yeah. you can use the dunks. Or if you have an area in your yard that just stays kind of wet, uh, you can spray with the BT, and that will yeah. control your mosquito issues. We have a rain chain that comes down one of our rentals, mm-hmm. and uh, then we've got a beautiful blue pot. This is a great little cottage thing. It's just gorgeous. Well, the rain had filled up this pot, and so some mosquitoes had gotten in there. So I just took a little BT and just poured it right in there, and they were gone instantly, just mm-hmm. like done. So those little tiny shrimp-looking things kind of jumping around inside the water, those are mosquitoes. Yeah. Well, they got rid of them, and it's organic. So right. you can keep it completely safe for your dogs, your pets, the hummingbirds, unless you're a worm, <laughs> a caterpillar of some sort. Uh, they will not like that. It's it's, it's detrimental right. to them and them alone. Mm-hmm. That is Gr- true. Great advice this week. So we covered, uh, what was that, uh, apples and, and salvias, mm-hmm. dead ending salvias and fertilizing. I would fertilize the fruit trees as well. Sure. While you're at it, take advantage of the rain. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. We'll be right back. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. the Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Waters Garden Companion plants for July are hibiscus, maple, purple verbena, crepe myrtle, and pentas. Pentas are a butterfly magnet with super sweet nectar produced in starry flowers on 12-inch stems. She loves heat and wind with minimal care to keep the flowers coming. The large clusters of vibrant star-shaped flowers are stunning in pots and raised beds. A superb flower that outperforms others as long as it's hot. You'll only find heat-hardy pentas at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. I hate weeds. Monsoon rains are so refreshing, even my landscape comes alive. But so do my weeds. Stop weeds in their track in one simple step. Water's weed and grass stopper spreads like fertilizer. It kills weed seed before monsoon rains allow them to sprout. No need to weed. It's safe for trees, even flower beds, and so much safer than that toxic waste the big box sells. Weed and grass stopper. It's just $24 and only found at Water's Garden Center in Prescott. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. I've had several customers. Uh, Now's the time when you see uh, lots of damage on cherry trees, ficus in the house, what else? Aspens, dropping leaves, spotted on, on chitalpas, catalpas, you know, all kinds of, of damage on plants. This is when we're seeing grasshoppers and blister beetles out. So the grasshoppers are starting to become large enough where you can spot them, and they are eating stuff like crazy, from the vegetable garden to the flower garden to just weeds in the backyard. Oh, my gosh. Don't let them get a hold. Uh, it's very simple to treat uh, grasshoppers. We make a bait. It's called Nolo Bait, N-O-L-O, Nolo Bait. It's organic. Uh, You spread it out there. They're attracted to it, and they die from a virus that we've laced this basically wheat product with that's just very specific to grasshoppers and crickets. So you put that out there, and within a couple weeks, it takes a little bit of time to get it through, that virus through all the, the colonies of grasshoppers, and there's so many, there's thousands of grasshoppers, that uh, it, it look, it's a slower but longer lasting solution. Blister beetles are more difficult. These are swarms of black, gray, tan colored beetles. They're long, about an inch long, but narrow, maybe a, a quarter inch long. Something that's close, but blister beetles, the, if you slap them and they're on your skin, they'll actually cause a blister. They actually have a reaction. If, you're, if your horses or goats or dogs, walk on them or, or eat one, they can actually kill them. It's, they're quite dangerous. But what they really like are your native uh, smaller leaf like Spanish broom, uh, cliff rose. They love mim- mimosas or silk tassel trees. 
There's certain things, ash. They love the native ash, or they'll eat any ash. They come in, they lay it, and they strip the plant. There's not one bit of foliage left. I mean, just decimate it. They can get into gardens. They'll do the same thing with your potato crop. They'll get in, and by the by that evening, no foliage left. You need to be ready, and they're showing up early. Normally, this is a end of August, September kind of insect. They're bad now. We're here in the uh, Chino Valley, Paulden, even uh, Prescott Valley. We're starting to see these waves of blister beetles. The way you kill that is there's a bug killer called multi-purpose insect spray. It's permethrin. It's it's one that kills specifically for our insects here in northern Arizona. Uh, we make it here at Waters Garden Center. It's called multi-purpose insect uh, killer. You put it in a hose and sprayer. You just go out and you hose them down, and they will instantly start dropping to the ground and, and quivering, just just like that. It also works on grasshoppers almost as well. Uh, I like it's. I like the no lobate better because it works so much longer. Uh, usually, grasshoppers are infecting your gardens and your neighbors and your neighbors' neighbors. So you can kill yours off with that spray, that multipurpose insect spray, but within a week, your neighbors are now infecting your gardens again. Blister beetles are different. They usually swarm and they're all together. They're not all over the neighborhood. They're very social. They kind of gather right now. And and if you can get that colony, you keep them from swarming around the neighborhood. They just kind of fly around in this cloud and just eat different plants, eat different people's gardens. When you need to, when you see this, you need to be ready right now because it could strip your gardens like like the whole thing now. So have something like in my gardens, I always have a hose and sprayer, and I always have a bottle of multi-purpose insect spray, and I just have it ready because I know they're going to show up. I just I just use it. It also works on aphids for uh, uh, like roses. You'll see them on uh, apple trees. That they'll, it'll affect uh, codling moth, that worm that gets in apples. Uh, but just be ready. We're seeing I'm seeing too many insects coming in right now. The other one I heard, I just helped a customer just before the show. They're crab apple, not crab apple, sorry, crepe myrtle. That's I'm not putting too many. Uh, I got too many customers in my head. Uh, crepe myrtle, the top had died off. They're going, what should I do? My wife won't let me kill it, won't let me kill it, won't let me uh, cut it back. She's saying it might grow out. I said, well, if it's brittle, it's not bending. If it's not, it's not going to come back. Or you can take a pocket knife and scrape the bark off. And if it's brown or white underneath the bark, that branch is dead. Get rid of dead material. It's like a magnet that draws a pestilence to your plants. Whether it's a dead limb on a pine tree, dead limb on an apple, dead limb on a dead patches on your strawberry patch, or dead branches on a crepe myrtle or anything. You never want dead uh, branches in your gardens or on your trees or shrubs because there's other insects that fly around. They just sniff out dead material. So tree borers um, from peach tree borer to there's Ips beetle on, 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 on like uh, pine trees, spruce. Sometimes there's tip borers on, on cypress. They're looking to eat dead things. And once they start eating that, they'll keep going down the live material. They just finish off a plant. So you really want to be diligent. Don't let dead leaves or dead branches really affect or take over your plant. Clean those things up and then fertilize them, and you'll push new growth. By the end of this growing season, you'll never know it had a dead branch. It'll just grow right out of it. But mainly keep the insects. They're highly – this is a growing season for your plant. You can get new growth out. It's also a growing season for insects. They can take over. Watch both. Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. In a new place, it's difficult to know who to trust, how to get help at the house, and which nursery will simply do what they say they'll do. At Waters Garden Center, we're here to help, in the landscape at least. Our team of plant ambassadors know your neighborhood, the plants that add color, increase privacy, and add fragrance and beauty. And we can show you exactly how to plant locally. Or we have teams to do all the work for you. We are Ken and Lisa Lane, and we guarantee our plants will live up to every promise here at Waters Garden Center.
Water's garden companion plants for July are maple, verbena, crepe myrtle, and rose of Sharon hibiscus. Rose of Sharon is a mountain hardy hibiscus with an enemy like blooms. Each stem of this hardy hibiscus is packed with buds. She makes a beautiful informal hedge or screen and is easily trained into small trees. Available Prescott colors show in blue, purple, white, red, and pink for years of enjoyment. You'll find breathtaking hibiscus here at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And we're back with Lisa Waters Lane. She comes each week and just shares her garden input, just a different, that's part of the joy of gardening is you just talk to different gardeners, you get different artistic favorites, how they grow plants. You can both be geranium growers, but you have different ways of doing it or ways to start it, or some start by seed, some start by cutting, some start by plugs or starts. Mm -hmm. And everyone's got these beautiful gardens, and if you get together, they just love sipping a glass of tea and talking gardening. Welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. Where's my tea? I know. Right <laughs> after this, I'll take you out. Want to go on a date? <laughs> yeah. Actually, a cool glass of tea sounds pretty good. It sure does. Oh, my goodness. So what do you got for this week? Well, this week I thought, so we got a big truck in on Monday uh, from Oregon. All kinds of different stuff on it. And I think you, I think I saw you on Facebook or Instagram. You were showing some of the trees yeah, and that kind sure. of stuff. But we also got a lot of shrubs and grasses oh. that you didn't show. Oh, there you go. So I thought I would hit on some of those, especially some of the grasses. I just, I love ornamental grasses and I think they are just not used enough here. Um, but they really add a lot of texture and movement to the landscapes. And really, you know, we don't have to have all these massive rock lawns. We can throw some other stuff in. And ornamental grasses are a perfect one to throw in. We are in the, the altitude where grasses just naturally grow. And so they naturalize very, very well. And these do not, you're not going to mow them. Right. You treat them like a tree or a shrub. You water, put them on that drip system, water them once a week. They're good to go. I, I shot an Instagram post of our uh, dwarf bunny grass in a cobalt blue urn, uh-huh. and then the schnauzer kind of plopped down in front of it, kind <laughs> of photobombed. Photo it, yeah. It's crazy, but it got more <laughs> interest. People were looking at the dog, not the plant. Not the I mean, grass. the sun was coming through the grass. It was just yeah. beautiful. I'm going, look at the grass, look at the grass. No, they all looked at the dog. And it's, I mean, grasses are pretty low maintenance. Yeah. You're cutting them back in February, March. And watching them grow back out again through the season. And great. Uh, most of them have plumes on them late summer into fall. And just a, a really nice landscape additive to put into your yards. This is a time of year when the landscapes can look a little off. Because all the spring bloomers, everything wakes up with fragrance and beauty and color. Summer, I mean, you got crepe myrtles, Rosa Sharon's, butterfly mm-hmm. bush. There's not as many things in bloom now through fall as there were Let's early say back on. in the, yeah, early on. So grasses are a great way to fill in with some style and color mm-hmm. and textures that you just can't get even in spring. Right. You just This is the only time you get to use them. And very few parts of the country grow grass so well. Mm-hmm. That is true. Well, let me tell you some of the ones we got in. Of course, Carl Forrester, he's like the standard grass for here a great what would you say four or five foot once the plumes are on yeah maybe three hip high something like that Mm -hmm. just a really nice grass one of the first ones to bloom keeps on going through fall even winter a lot of times till we get those heavy snows so definitely a a good standby for here perennial of the month perennial of the year 1998, I think, or something like <laughs> like 20 years ago. That was a long time ago, honey. Like, it was somewhere in there. Maybe it was 2002. Some, it was perennial of the year for, for a year. It's okay. amazing. Coral foresters. Yeah. <laughs> um, Elijah blue fescues. Now, the, the blue fescue is a great smaller. It's great for um, putting it around those perennial beds or walkways. Just a really nice, real pretty blue grass. Gets you a little different color from that green that's so common. So Rated real containers. Nice one. Mm-hmm. Great in Oh, yeah. Raised beds. You bet. 
Uh, we got a flame grass in. The thing about the flame grass that is flame grass, say that three times fast, is it's green right now, but as we go into more fall, into winter, those stalks are going to turn a really nice red color. So you get a lot of re really pretty fall color off of that flame grass. The Carly Rose fountain grass, which is actually what I think we have growing in our pot. Oh, it could be. Yeah, it, you're right. Grass, yeah. Is really pretty. The, the plume on it's kind of a real compact... I don't know how to describe it, but it's almost got a purpley hue to it. But really, really pretty. It's gorgeous in that pot. Absolutely gorgeous. Take a look at Waters Garden Center's Instagram page, and you will see it's at the top of the feed. Hit the little heart button if you're an Instagrammer and say, <laughs> hey, following. Yeah, it's really pretty. Um, we also got in some sedges, which you know aren't technically a grass i guess but i call them a grass because that's grass. what they look like yeah. so we got the orange sedge which is a real pretty green but the tips of it are kind of a more of an orange color mixes in nicely with galardias and things like that to give you a really nice look out in the yard and then the evergold japanese sedge which is a, a variegated sedge probably great for those spots where it's a little more shady or filtered light be perfect and i think sedges do really well in containers in my opinion i think they do really nicely. well in any environment mm -hmm. they'll take the nastiest of clay soils and thrive right uh, they just adapt so well because you've got a little bit it's it's not really a grass it's got a little bit thicker mm -hmm. but it's not a reed it's someplace in between let's say a <laughs> cattail and a grass yeah. where it just has a sturdy upright pretty mm -hmm. glossy type of, of texture to it so you right. mix it with some pintas or salvias and they just pop right look really good together mm -hmm. we also got in some gold bar and porcupine grass which is a variegated grass but it's not a vertical variegated it's a horizontal variegated um i did they are gorgeous when the morning sun hits them out in your yard they just almost glow because of that variation in there and beautiful out in the landscape we've got one in the backyard i think it's the gold bar mm -hmm. or zebra ground one of those i forget yeah. uh but it's been back there for probably 10 years mm -hmm. all i do is i take the lawnmower and i go over it in like march i fertilize it with the all-purpose plant food and it just looks great the rest of the year. That's all. That's the only care you need. Right. Just amazing grasses. Grasses. It gets mm -hmm. up maybe, again, hip high. Most of these you've mentioned yeah. are either ankle, knee, or hip high. Right. Uh, right. We've got some really big boys, like mm -hmm. the switch grasses and the pampas grasses. Mm -hmm. But most of them that we have are really easy to oh, care super for. super easy to care for. Definitely. And in addition, I'll just mention some of the really pretty shrubs that we got in yeah. at the same time. So we got some Gold Star Potentia. So Gold Star is a little bit shorter than the Goldfinger. It probably gets two to three feet tall and wide. Um, nice big yellow blossom on it. Very, very attractive out there in the landscape. We got some great barberries, so Orange Rocket, which is probably one of Pretty. my favorite barberries. I mean, you just don't see that color in anything else, but just this beautiful orange that just kind of like fluorescent orange kind of thing really shows up nicely out there in the yard. One of my favorites. The other is the Crimson Pygmy, which is a real dark burgundy color. And then Rose Glow, which is kind of a variegated from pink to dark burgundy. Um, and barberries are, you know, some people are poo-poo them, but I think they're beautiful. You just don't get those colors with a lot of other shrubs. Not the, they don't bloom. The actual plant, the shrub, mm -hmm. I mean, the foliage is orange. Right. It is pink. It is red. It is burgundy. No plant does that. I mean, you can get some golds and some silvers yeah. out of Euonymus and mm -hmm. silverberry, yellow agnes, but barberries, definitely unique in how, they, how you can landscape those out in the yard. And very dry hardy once they're established. Yes. They're very good at taking care of themselves. Full sun. Hit them with wind. They're just tough as nails. How are they with deer? Are they somewhat resistant? I don't think the deer is so much. Sometimes the rabbits can go after certain ones. Mm. So you got to do your homework a little bit on which color. So they've got their favorite colors, like you know, like some, <laughs> of course, like like people do. But uh, generally, they're they're pretty tough. Okay, all right. We also got in some min uh, beyond midnight bluebeard. So bluebeard is Caryopteris. 
looks, uh, a lot of people kind of confuse it sometimes with a uh, butterfly bush, kind of similar yeah. in height than how it grows. But the Beyond Midnight is a really, really dark, dark purple. It's really pretty. Actually, it's, it's not purple. It's more like a blue. Yeah. Can't really describe it. It's, it's a preferred variety of yeah. false spirea or mm-hmm. coreopterus. Uh, it c- companion plants with chaste tree. So it's mm-hmm. uh, that's a kind of looks like a dwarfed chaste tree. If I were to compare it, so that gets up maybe three by three by three, and chase yeah. tree gets up, you know, 10, 12 10, feet tall. 12. Yeah. And so you plant those together, and butterflies, you oh, will yeah. have more butterflies than you've ever seen it's in your a yard. It's great pollinator they plant. They cannot get enough of it. It's amazing to watch. Yeah. Full sun, water it once a week, maybe twice a week if it's brand new in the ground. And it's good to go. It'll take any amount of heat that we've had this week. Anything we got, it'll just take it yep. and thrive. Summer bloomer from now through the end of fall. Mm-hmm. Great, Lisa. The shrubs you can plant in the summer and have them thrive. I don't think you can kill any one of those. They're so <laughs> tough. <laughs> Ken Elisa Lane will be right back after this. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion plants for July are hibiscus, maple, purple verbena, crepe myrtle, and pentas. Pentas are a butterfly magnet with super sweet nectar produced in starry flowers on 12-inch stems. She loves heat and wind with minimal care to keep the flowers coming. The large clusters of vibrant star-shaped flowers are stunning in pots and raised beds. A superb flower that outperforms others as long as it's hot. You'll only find heat-hardy pentas at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. Design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-home garden consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. At Waters Garden Center, one thing that we're really famous for are really nice trees. Lisa and I, we actually fly up, or we used to fly up. We used to fly, now we drive. Go to the farm and hand pick the trees. We're friends, directly friends with the farmer that grows our apples, our shade trees, our aspens. We know them personally, we take them to dinner. These aren't big mega corporations, these are backyard gardeners. And they got a few acres and they just love growing desert willows, a pear tree, or they got the greatest looking Arizona aspen or desert willow. We're famous for native stuff. Well, we got a whole shipment of trees in this week, an entire semi. We had to restock our tree racks. And and fruit trees, a, th- a secret about fruit trees, they need to be about seven years old before they're old enough to start fruiting. So we purposely go after trees that are old enough to fruit. Yeah, they're a little bit more expensive. Yeah, you pay $10 more. But you don't have to wait three years for this thing to finally start fruiting. It's a fruit, like in the racks, you'll see fruits on certain trees. For sure, it's old enough to fruit next year. Aspens. We don't want aspens that are field dug out of someone's backyard ranch. We want things that are plugged. They're actually cookie cutter. They're exact. They're not going to get stressed. They're fully rooted. So we have aspens just showed up that are single trunked, but mainly the most popular are multi trunked three to five stems coming out of this 15, 20, 25 gallon bucket. And they're perfect. They're just beautiful. A little, another little caveat. There's really, there's really only two kinds of aspens. What I find is growers will actually name them something different. Well, ours are golden aspens, but it's populus tremuloides. This is where you need to know Latin. And so populus, it's a poplar. Trembling leaf poplar, that's the Latin. That's what act, the actual name describes the leaf. As the wind goes through it, it, it trembles. It, it, it just dances. Then there's also the uh, 
uh, Swiss variety or Swiss Aspen. Okay, that's a European variety. It's got more of a serrated edge. It actually looks more like a like a, a birch tree than it does an aspen tree. Yes, it's populous, but it's got a different last Latin name, which means it's more European. Uh, if you see a, a Western aspen, aspen is aspen is aspen. They just try to name them so they get, oh, mine's better than theirs. Look, it's got, it's got the name golden in it. Uh, it's just, mine's Dakota. Mine's uh, uh, prairie aspens. There are some different genetics a little bit as far as width goes, kind of like maples. There's some that are a little wider than others, some that grow more tall, less white. But basically, a Western, like the native aspens you see growing here are aspens. They're all going to be good to go. There's a fresh crop coming in. And the aspens we had just come in are Populus tremuloides. It's the one that grows right there in Aspen Creek. You can almost walk there from Prescott. The wild ones that grow up in, in Williams and Flack, that's the one. That's the one you really want to plant in your backyard. Sycamores just came in. Um, they do really well now. So a whole more maples came in. Birch came in. More purple leaf plums. So just do a little bit of homework on, on what you're planting and when you're planting it. But this is a great time to be planting a new shade tree, fruit tree, because you're into this growing season where it's warm. The soil's warm. Uh, we're going to get afternoon rains. It gets some some cloud cover. It shades it. Things do really well right now. They're also, in the same respect, watch. How do I put this tactfully? You're seeing all kinds of plants being shipped into box stores. Okay, that, I said it. There we go. They should not be planted here. I mean, I'm just, I'm appalled sometimes. I'll walk through just doing my, get a piece of lumber. Or just walking through and say competitively, I'm, I'm, I'm competitive. I want to know what my competitors are doing. Walking through and I hear some of the questions or I see some of the plants and I'm just, oh, my stomach turns. They're doing a disservice to some of the gardeners out there. They just, they'll die this winter or they're not going to take our wind or they turn to yellow instantly because of our water. It just, oh, it hurts me. Do your homework. Do some research. I put together a list of plants you just can't kill. I mean, you just, these are maybe, if you don't know where to start, you're new to gardening, start here. Okay, butterfly bush. Butterfly bush thinks it, it just loves growing up at this elevation. But what you'll find in the box stores or many garden centers, they only have the dark night butterfly bushes, the ones your grandparents grew. These are monsters. They're, they're very aggressive. They're great if you have nothing in your yard, you want to plant one thing, and it's purple. But it's too aggressive. There's so many better varieties. Some of the new varieties like, like Red Ruby, Miss Kim, they're, they're spreading varieties. They, don't, they aren't as aggressive. They got brighter colors. You got yellows and whites and reds. There's more than just that purple one. So likewise, Russian sage. This is a spiky uh, um, sage plant, purple flowers. Grows up about hip high, maybe a little bit taller. But there's some new varieties out that are less weedy, less invasive. Russian sage, just you can't kill it. The problem is, can you contain it? And so Russian sage, you might look at, if it's got a name to it, uh, like ruffled or, or if it's got a name before Russian sage, it's probably a new introduction, dwarfed variety. And so we sell all three, four varieties here at the garden center, different sizes, but really, if I were planting it in my own yards, I would look for the named varieties because they're less, they're just easier to maintain. Uh, another one I really like, sedums. All the sedums, not all. There's some hardy perennial varieties of sedums that really adapt well. Autumn Joy is the most recognizable. It's a taller sedum. Gets up about oh, 12, 18 inches tall, has this beautiful red flower in it in the fall. But there's also creeping varieties. There's lime greens and oxblood reds, pure greens. We use them as, as ground covers in between rocks, rock, rock gardens. Now, they're just tough as nails. You can put them in a container and forget to water them for a week in this heat, and they'll still live. They're just tough. You cannot kill a sedum. What you can do is buy a desert variety. So there's some that will not take our winters. Uh, a lot of Californians get tricked this way. And so they'll go, oh, I got all these varieties. Well, no, you, yeah, they'll grow now, but they'll die in the winter. You want a perennial variety. So ask the questions when you're talking to folks or read the tag. We're a zone seven. 
uh, you folks in the higher elevations, let's say uh, uh, Iron Springs, Williams, Flagstaff, even colder, you're a zone six or five. So you want to have a you want to have a sedum that can grow in zone seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Just that zone or lower, you're good. If you're up in zone 8, 9, 10, okay, you folks are out in Cortis Junction, if it down in Camp Verde, Cottonwood, okay, you're a zone 8, got it. So maybe you can cheat and go, you can grow a 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1, 2. Stay away from the 9s and 10s, 11s, 12s. Those are Phoenix, Tucson, Palm Springs. You'll find those in our area. They're selling them because they go, yeah, ship 50 of those to all my stores. They got stores all over the Southwest. Yeah, you'll find them. And there'll be a great annual. But you want to, you want, if you're planting it, you want a perennial plant it once and done. And it comes back and looks great every year. Some other things you just can't kill that I love in my own gardens. Lamb's ear. You just, this is a perennial. It just, it's evergreen. It just looks great. I put it around my pond. It's light colored. It's just animals don't eat it. It's a great plant for here. Daylilies. This has been a tremendous daylily season. They're in full bloom or have been in bloom for well over a month and will continue to do so. This is a grassy looking perennial, gets up about knee high, and many of them repeat bloom. This is Stella Deors. There's We probably have we sell 50 different varieties that people collect daylilies like they do roses because they're so tough and animals, javelina, rabbits, deer, they don't eat daylilies. If you're going to start someplace, start with daylilies because they're just so easy to grow. Your grasses. I just posted a, a photo of my, I think it was a bunny grass. I planted this grass it was in full bloom. The sun had been setting. It was coming through the plumes. And I got a shot of it in this beautiful cobalt blue urn. I mean, just this beautiful curvy pot with this spiky uh, uh, grass coming out of it. It was spectacular. Sun coming through it. I posted that to my Instagram and Facebook feeds here at Waters Garden Center. And it got more comments because it was pretty. And then I had a schnauzer pet dog in the photo as well. So I go, they have photo bomb. They, they were just people having fun with it. But all the grasses, don't think pampas grass is ginormous grass, but all the grasses, coral foresters, feather grass, deer grass, they all look really good right now. Many of them are in bloom and they're just tough. We're in natural prairie, high elevation grasses. Most of them are perennial. They do really great. And they're really, really easy to grow. Plant them, water them a couple times a month, put them on the same drip system as your trees, and they're good to go. This is going to be hard for some of you desert dwellers to believe, but summer is a tremendous time to plant any one of these in the mountains of Arizona. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Waters Garden companion plants for July are hibiscus, maple, verbena, and crepe myrtle. Crepe myrtle flowers are intense watermelon pink, solar reds, and LED whites that cover this heat-loving shrub. Plant where you enjoy its beautiful multicolored bark and sinuous branches up close. The flowers show against forest green foliage that turns red and orange in autumn. Growing to just head height, every yard has room for at least one and only available for summer planting here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever in just $27 for a 20-pound bag. Safe, natural, organic fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So let me get a couple classes coming up. We are hosting classes in our back greenhouse. This is a huge building, open air, in the shade. We just space everyone out accordingly. We've got PA systems that kind of broadcast well enough. We also live stream those. Uh, and then a favor from you. So I'm about to do something really big 
really bold, and I need my friends to kind of support me and take a look at it. Uh, but let me go with the classes first. So classes coming up. To this this weekend, it's Edible Landscapes. That's Trees and Berries. I'll be teaching that class. The 8th, that's this ne- sat- next Saturday, basically. Proper planting for success. How do you plant something in mountain soil that's so yucky and have it thrive? We'll, you'll be an expert, right? absolute expert by the time you get done. Uh, the 15th, wildlife and bug prevention. Watch for bugs. We'll have examples of bugs, how to deal, repel, deal with deer and javelina and rabbits and squirrels and gophers. And then it's the best evergreens for the mountains of landscape. We just uh, we just had a fresh batch of, of evergreens, trees, pines, firs, come in, junipers. Now, that'll be August 22nd. We'll showcase those. What if you like evergreens? That is a class to take a look at. Or if you just want to prune them be- beforehand, come in and take a look. Now for the favor. So this whole COVID thing has everyone going online. This is easy for your content. So we publish a garden column. We have YouTube, over a million downloads on, on YouTube. We have our own channel. It's pretty easy for small companies with personalities to, to broadcast that podcast. You can, you can listen to this show anytime you want on your own device. What's difficult is how does a small company show off their inventory they have in the store? How do they show it off online? This has been since March. We knew we had to go online. We didn't know if we'd be shut down or not. We were making this push to show off our plants so people can peruse those and see what we have without coming in the store. Uh, You can order those. You can pay for them. You can have them come pick them up. Have your gardener come pick them up. Have a friend with a pickup truck come pick them up. We're going to launch a store on Monday. Uh, I'm going to show off at Waters Garden Center's inventory online. I'm going to soft launch this. I'm going to go through our website, our social media. I'm not even put it on our website because it gets too much traffic. I'm going to put it through our social media feed, Instagram and Facebook, Twitter. Uh, first, I'm going to go, hey, friends, take a look and see, because it'll be a little glitchy at first, but take a look and try it and see. Uh, I'll have a little bit of competition. So what I have in the store, someone might be shopping for it, but you can also see it online. But it's not live. I update the inventory every morning. And then take that inventory out every every morning. So there's it'll be a little glitchy at first. I'm, I only mention this to my friends so you can see it because your enemies will lambast you and go, yeah, oh, what? A, I can't believe you do it this way. I don't need that. I don't need criticism. I need friendships and going, hey, why don't you tweak this or this worked really well or hey, I love this. Do you have this? If that's of interest or or if, if you could help me. Friend or follow Waters Garden Center on Facebook or on Instagram, and then take a look at that. We'll be launching that. I'm thinking for a week, try it through there. Then I'll then I'll actually put it into our newsletter, and then I'll go into our website and go full on press releases, go full on, and then it will just be crazy. I've got friends with other launches like this. I let them go first, <laughs> and I talk to them. They said, "I can't believe the number of people ordering online. It's crazy." It actually overwhelmed their systems. So I want to play with it first, soft launch, and then kind of get better and better at it. Take a look at it. But look for Waters Garden Center's online store coming up. Throughout the week, Lisa and I camp out here at Waters Garden Center. We actually like talking one-on-one through a mask to our friends, family, neighbor here at Waters Garden Center. Wondering why the grass is always greener on the other side? Well, it's probably because your neighbor used the all-purpose fertilizer from Waters Garden Center. Monsoon is right around the corner, and it's the perfect time to feed your plants. Water's all-purpose fertilizer is the only organic made especially for Arizona mountain soils. Don't buy a bunch of different fertilizer for your flowers, veggies, trees, or grass. This one does it all. The plants on your side will be happier, healthier, well, greener. Safe, natural, organic. Water's Garden Center in Prescott. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.